Statistics and Excel Poisson Distribution Roller Coaster Line Example. Got data? Let's get stuck into it with Statistics and Excel. First, a word from our sponsor. Yeah, actually, we're sponsoring ourselves on this one because apparently the merchandisers, they don't want to be seen with us. But, but that's okay, whatever. Because our merchandise is, is better than their stupid stuff anyways. Like our, trust me, I'm an accountant product line. Yeah, it's paramount that you let people know that you're an accountant. Because apparently we're among the only ones equipped with the number crunching skills to answer society's current deep, complex, and nuanced questions. If you would like a commercial free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com. You're not required to, but if you have access to OneNote, we're on the icon left hand side, OneNote presentation 1536 Poisson distribution roller coaster line example. We're also uploading transcripts to OneNote so you can go into the view tab, immersive reader, change the language if you so choose, either read or listen to the transcript in multiple different languages being able to tie into the video presentations with the timestamps. OneNote desktop version here in prior presentations we've been thinking about how to represent data sets both mathematically using formulas like the average or mean quartiles the median as well as pictorial representations like a box and whiskers or a histogram. The histogram typically what we visualize when we're thinking about the spread of data using terminology such as it's skewed to the right or it's skewed to the left. We're now looking at families of curves that can be represented with equations, which could give us more predictive power if those curves could approximate our actual data set. In prior presentations, we looked at the simple curve of the uniform distribution. We're now talking about the Poisson distribution. It's more complicated, but it's not poison. It's not that complicated. It's Poisson. Poisson distribution. So we have, usually this is going to be related to like line examples when you're talking about oftentimes business type uh, of scenarios. So that's what we will be using here. Imagining that we're waiting in line for a roller coaster ride. So X equals the arrivals during one minute. So we're trying to show how many people are uh, arriving within a one minute time frame. That's the time span, roller coaster ride, uh, ride, that's what we're dealing with. And then the mean is what we're generally going to need if we're gonna be using the Excel uh, functions. So let's imagine that in practice, we were trying to determine the data related to how many people are showing up within a line, and then we'll see if there's any observations we can make about it to see if it fits a Poisson uh, type of distribution, in which case we might be able to use a formula to give us more predictive power about what might be happening in the future in relation to the line. Now in Excel, we can have a random uh, number generator here to approximate the Poisson distribution with an element of randomness in it. So if you want to check out Excel, uh, you can do that. We'll work this problem in Excel as well. But instead of just using a random number generator, we're going to have to give Excel the mean in order to create random numbers in accordance with the conditions of a Poisson distribution. And so these are the numbers that we get from that random generation. I think we generated like a thousand numbers in the example in Excel, although we didn't put all those numbers here in our practice problem in the OneNote. So if we had all of our numbers, what do these numbers mean? Well, it means if we're sitting there with our stopwatch, seeing how many arrivals are happening during each one minute time interval, we're waiting as each one minute passes and saying, okay, this time and that one minute, four people arrived. In another one minute time interval, three people arrived. In another one minute time interval, two people arrived. In another one minute time interval, six people arrived and so on and so forth. I'm gonna skip over here to the left now. Once we have our data, we can put our data into our bins or buckets. So these are the arrivals that have shown up and we're gonna say, okay, let's count the arrivals. This represents the number of arrivals, the people that have been showing up within the time intervals, which we said was once again, 
the one minute. So now we're going to say of the thousand counts that we had, how many times were zero people arriving? How many times was one people arriving, two people? And we're just going to count these items over here. In Excel, we, can, we might call that a frequency and you might use an equation like this to do it. Now note that you also might say, why don't I use a count if function? You could, you could say this equals count if, meaning if the, you find zero in this number of fields over here, Excel, I would like you to count the number of times a zero shows up. However, sometimes when you use these random number generators, it doesn't give you a whole number or something like that. So sometimes that formula doesn't give you the, the right result. So the frequency often picks it up more accurately, I have found, which is a spill array function, a little bit more fancy frequency. And then we're picking up the array over here and then the data bins here. And this actually just spills out the formula. So this means that I believe we did a thousand X's, a thousand one minute samples to see how many people arrive and zero people arrived in 62 one minute intervals. One person arrived in 171 one minute intervals. Two people arrived in 243 one minute intervals and so on uh, and so forth. So if I total this up, this number down here should tie out to, if I sum up this column, the number of, of samples that we had. If we did this a thousand times, the number of random number generations, that gives us a double check that everything is, is properly calculated. This is gonna be the percent of the total. So if 62 people, uh, 62 times zero people arrived, then that means that 62 out of the thousand times, 62 th divided by a thousand or 6.2 times is the percent that that zero people arrived out of the thousand. So we can represent this as a percent of the total, right? So if 171 uh, times one person arrived in the one minute interval out of a thousand one minute intervals, I could take 171 divided by a thousand and we would get the 17 point one and so on so then we can say okay well if i look at the mean of the data we can uh, we can calculate the mean and i could just use my formula in excel to do that and that would be an average formula so i would take the average of this data set the whole thing i'm just taking the average of the whole data set adding them up and dividing by the by the number uh, of events, which was a thousand. And then the variance, this is the variance uh, using the population formula and the variance using the uh, sample formula. And the point that we want to come out to is the mean, of course, is close to the mean that we had when we started out. Now, remember that if you were doing this in practice, you were sitting there with a stopwatch counting the arrivals, you might not have any, you might not know the mean, you might have an idea of it but you wouldn't know what the mean is. The reason we started with a mean here is because I need the mean in order to, to generate these random numbers uh, in accordance with a Poisson distribution. So, so notice when I take the mean over here, obviously it's gonna be somewhat close to, but not exact to the mean that we put in when we generated the random numbers. The point we wanna look at however is that if i took my data and also did my common calculation of the variance of uh, the data which would be this formula then if it's close to the mean then that is an indication that it might be following a poisson distribution so if i look at this if i looked at my data and i said okay is this giving me any predictive power on how i'm going to regulate my lines at the roller coasters and whatnot and how many people are going to show up well, then I can start to say, let's analyze the data with the mean of the data. Let's take a look at the variance of the data. If those two are similar, then possibly I can approximate what is happening here with a Poisson distribution, representing it with a formula, which will make it easier to kind of make uh, predictions into the future. We can also plot this information. So if I plotted the frequency, so we're plotting the frequency here. So here's the, the numbers zero up to, to 29. Remember that when we're looking at a Poisson distribution, the idea is that it could go infinitely up in this direction. It's not going to in practice because it's not like an infinite number of people are gonna show up 
in a one minute time interval. That's very unlikely, but in theory, it's like going up to infinity. That's why you will typically have a skew to the right. So this isn't exactly bell shaped. It's gonna be basically uh, skewed to the right is the general idea. Now, if I plot this data, we're saying, hey, this looks kind of like a Poisson type of distribution. And we know the mean is equal to the variance. So that's giving us more evidence that this looks like a Poisson uh, type of distribution. This is the same thing, but instead of representing the numbers in terms of the count, the frequency column, we're looking at the percent of the total. So you can see you can, in essence, represent the same concept with the percent column as opposed to the, and, and you get a, the same kind of distribution look and feel. Quick look over here, if I was to, to remember, calculate our, if I was to think about the mean and the variance calculations, you'll recall that if I take all my data sets and subtract out the mean, which is this number, we're looking at the distance between each of our data points, the number of arrivals that, that showed up in a one minute interval, minus the mean, and there's our difference. And if I was to add up all the differences, I don't have all my data, but if I added up all the differences in a thousand samples, it would come out to zero. So you'll recall that we had to do something to get our number of spread, which is usually the standard deviation and the variance, we squared it. So we squared it. So this is the difference squared, making all the numbers positive, but also a lot larger as they are now squared. Summing that up, that gives us our 2553. So the squared sum of the difference. And then if we divide that by the count, which was a thousand, we did a thousand samples, that gives us our variance. Just to show you how we're getting the variance over here, another format to get the variance. And then if I take the square root, uh, we get the standard deviation. Okay, so then let's let's now say, okay, well, it looks like it might be a Poisson distribution. So now if I take my same data, the number of arrivals, I'm gonna use the mean, this time I'm gonna use the mean that we calculated in our actual data, 2.373. And I'm going to, to use that to generate our Poisson.dist function. So now I'm going to say, let's take my same uh, number of arrivals could be either zero, one, two, three, four, the number of people that arrive in a one minute interval. And I'm just going to now estimate it, not with my actual data, but with a Poisson dot dist, because I've now come to the determination that it might follow that function, which gives me more predictive power. And so all I need with a Poisson dot dist you have the X, which is going to be the one, the number of arrivals, zero, one, two, and then comma, the mean. All you really need is the mean. And the mean we have over here at the 2.73. And then comma, the cumulative. The cumulative argument is going to be, if it will be cumulative, you're asking, what's the, what's the likelihood of, say, like zero to three people would be cumulative up to three, which would add up these percents. Whereas if you say it's not cumulative, which we're doing here, false or zero, then you're gonna, it's going to say what's the likelihood of just one person arriving, just two people arriving in this case, not zero to two people. And then we get our, our percent likelihoods. This percent likelihoods is, is kind of similar to our percent of total column we got over here. We're not getting the actual frequency because we didn't actually tell Excel how many tests to run. We just use the Poisson distribution to give us this percent, uh, this percent column. And then however many tests we run, whatever the sample is, we, we can multiply times the percent to get the, the actual numerical values, right? So that's gonna be our Poisson formula. If I look at the difference between what we got here with the, with the Poisson versus over here, I got 2.2. 6.2, 17.1, versus 6.52, 17.8, So this would be another indication if I'm doing this in practice, I'm like, okay, I got my, my data set. It looked like the mean is close to the variance, which may, means it might be a Poisson distribution. The actual graph looks kind of like a Poisson distribution. If I plot out a Poisson distribution and look at what I got in my actual data set compared to the Poisson distribution in terms of percentages, 
it looks pretty close, which means that the Poisson distribution might give me some good uh, predictive predictive power. So so this is another, I'll, I'll go over this in a second. Let's first go to the right here. So if I, if I take the mean of uh, the Poisson distribution, obviously it's gonna be that uh, 2.75 and I can get that mean by, and so remember when we, when we calculated the Poisson, we, we put in that it was 2.75. But if you look at this column here, this column is taking uh, column X times column P of X. So if I multiply those two columns out all the way down, so this is like, this one is like two times 0.243 gives us about 0.49. And then I sum up this column. That's one way that we can get uh, the mean over here. So we get the calculation of the mean. And we can also do that with a formula, which is a sum product formula, just to get an idea on, on the Excel formula. This is gonna do the same thing. So it's kind of a fancy formula that could be useful from time to time. Uh, sum product, and then we're picking up uh, the two basically arrays, and that will in essence do the same thing, right? We're taking the sum product of this column and this column. So we'll test that out in our Excel presentation if you wanna test out the formulas. And then the variance, if I take this, and then this is uh, X minus the mean on this column, and then this is gonna be squaring that number, that's gonna give us this column. And if I sum up that column, that's one way that we can basically calculate the variance. And I can also do that with a, a sum product formula as well, which we'll do in Excel if you wanted to do that and put everything into a formula here. Notice it's a little bit kind of weird. You, you might be saying, well, that looks a little bit strange to, to calculate the mean and the variance. Notice it's a little bit different than when we actually had our data over here, because when I actually had my data, then then we're working with the data, whereas we're instead of working with like the percentages of the totals, whereas when I calculate the Poisson distribution over here, uh, we're not looking at like a, a sample of a thousand data units, we're looking at the percent of the, the percent likelihood. So we're basically saying this is the percent likelihood that one person shows up in uh, the one minute time period. So in any case, those are gonna be those items. And then we can ask questions like, what's the likelihood that less than, that you have less than uh, three arrivals? So if the likelihood that you had less than three arrivals, if I look at my data set now, you have to be, this is equal or less than. So if I went to my arrivals over here, I can say, well, you, you got 6.52 of zero people, 17.8 of one, 24.3, 22.12. So we come out to is that what we get over here, uh, 70.75 about because those numbers were rounded. And then you can also use the Poisson distribution using the, the cumulative in order to calculate that. So you can you could say, well, it's gonna be the Poisson distribution. The X is going to be uh, the, the, the number that we want, which I just hard coded as three. And then comma, the mean is gonna be the mean that we calculated up top or the one we started with at the left and then comma. And then this time, the one represents cumulative, true or one. So now it's counting up to that point, zero, two, three, instead of just giving us the result for three itself. And then here, we've got another question that could come up between, if we wanna be between say two and five. Now that's a little bit tricky because in practice problems you wanna say, okay, are you, are you including the two or the five? So you have to determine are you, if it's between two and five and you're not including the two or the five, then you're just talking about the three and the four, which would be 22.12 plus 15.09. So in like a book problem, you have to be very you know, specific about whether or not they're including the two and the five. So we put in between the two, which means we're not including the two or the five in this case. Or you can use the Poisson distribution. This one gets a little tricky because you might say, okay, how is that gonna work? Because if I look at my Poisson distribution, if I say the cumulative function, if I say for five would be how many, it would be this up to 
5. So, But how do I get between 2 starting at 2? Well, I have to go from this up to 5 and then subtract out the amount that goes up to 2, right? So I have to do a subtraction. So I could do that with two Poisson distributions in one formula, Poisson distribution, and then we're going to go up to four in this case because we're not including five so that's where it gets a little tricky because this isn't including five so I'm going up to four comma the mean and then comma it's going to be cumulative minus we're subtracting another Poisson distribution here which is going to be going up to two and then the mean and it's also going to be cumulative all right so if we graphed if if we graphed these two things together then these are our graphs, two different formats of the graph. So this is going to be, blue is the actual Poisson, and then the, the orange is from our data set. So you can see they're not exact. In other words, if I looked at my actual data set, that's what we generated over here. That's going to be, in essence, this chart that we, that we got with our data set, or this one with the percentages, and then we compared that to the data that we got from the Poisson, the actual smooth curve that we got from our formula, and they're pretty close. So in practice, we can say, okay, we, we're gonna gather our data. We then took our data and we said, does the mean equal the variance? If it equals the variance, it might be a Poisson distribution. We then graphed it. It looks kind of like it might be the shape of a Poisson distribution. We then calculated the Poisson distribution, looked at the difference between it and the shape, and it looks pretty close. And then we can graph it on top of each other and say, hey, look, these two things look, they're not exact, but they line up fairly close. And therefore, if I can use the Poisson distribution, then it's going to give me more predictive power into the future because I can just plug numbers into an equation that I have an equation for as opposed to a random outcome uh, of, of numbers that I have no real way to extrapolate into the future that would be easy without, you know, more complicated kind of <laughs> methods.